Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Aimstone channel. And of course, as always, let's go ahead and start this video with Bitcoin market. As of the time of this recording, Bitcoin is slightly below $64,000. The main reason why Bitcoin pulled back a bit because some event took place overnight. I will talk about that in a minute. But yes, the Bitcoin surpassed $65,000. So yes, Bitcoin skyrocketed by a lot within, well, like two, three days since Sunday when assassination on Donald Trump took place. And from that point on, Bitcoin skyrocketed. Yes, I remember very vividly in Sunday, Bitcoin was at $58,000 and now yesterday we charged $65,000. That is a massive appreciation. But overnight, Bitcoin pulled back. It was as low as, I believe, $62,000. Now it recovered a bit. And the main reason why it pulled back because um, Madcock seems to move roughly $6 billion worth of Bitcoin. I will talk about that news later on in this video. But from technical standpoint, yes, Bitcoin still remains quite above uh, this um, resistance. So that is fantastic. But let's see. If you take a look at the RSI in this 4 hourly Bitcoin chart, it seems like BTC may be overbought a little bit in a short period of time. But uh, let's see if it actually going to be uh, overbought or not. Let's zoom out to this one daily Bitcoin chart because as we can see, it seems like Bitcoin now is forming uh, some new patterns. That would be a triangle. So Bitcoin is clearly within this triangle. And let's see how long it will remain within this triangle and maybe it will uh, break about or below in the near future. Obviously, guys, I will give you an update on that. Additionally, as we can see, Bitcoin is about to break uh, 50 days and 100 days moving averages. 200 days moving average is already behind us. So 50 days, 100 days could be, I don't, I don't want to say resistance, but that's the level we want to pass through it. Now, let's zoom out to this one weekly Bitcoin chart and let's talk about uh, potential selling pressure from Madcox. Let's remember that Madcox has almost 140,000 Bitcoin at its current price. It will be almost $9 billion. And let's not forget what happened when Germany sold their 50,000 Bitcoin, which would be at this current price $3 billion. So before Germany started selling the Bitcoin, Bitcoin was at $72,000. And when Germany, actually before Germany was done selling Bitcoin, Bitcoin bottomed at $53,000. So technically Bitcoin dropped by $19,000. The good news is that Bitcoin is very resilient and recover quite nicely. But let's just take a look what happened in 2022. We saw a number of companies have been selling Bitcoin. The first one would be, who remember, Terra Luna. Terra Luna has been crashing down. I believe it was second quarter. Terra Luna sold 80,000 Bitcoin. Yes, 80,000 Bitcoin, that is a huge amount of money. This is when Bitcoin dropped from $45,000 to $30,000. And then Elon Musk and Tesla sold 75% um, of their Bitcoin, which would be uh, 30,000 Bitcoin. Then Bitcoin dropped from... Uh, $30,000 to $20,000, then it fluctuated sideways a bit. And then we all remember FTX. FTX collapsed, I believe it was uh, Q3 or Q4, it was December, I believe, uh, 2022. This one Bitcoin dropped to $16,000. <laughs> that was the bottom. So we have Terra Luna sold 80,000 uh, Bitcoin that we have. Uh, Tesla, 30,000 Bitcoin, and uh, FTX sold 20,000 Bitcoin, which at that point would be over a billion dollars. But if you take all these Bitcoins combined, it will be 130,000 Bitcoin. And Madgox has slightly more than that, almost 140,000 Bitcoins. Of course, I do not uh, expect that we're going into the bear market from this point on. I do not expect Bitcoin to collapse by... I don't know, 60, 70%, even if Madcock sells everything. But luckily, there are a couple of points that may uh, keep us quite elevated. The first point that we are in the bull market, Bitcoin having just took place, it would be very unusual if Bitcoin will collapse by quite a lot soon after the Bitcoin having. That has never happened in history. Another point, 
Bitcoin spot ETFs. Bitcoin spot ETFs continue to accumulate Bitcoin in a quite elevated pace yesterday and before yesterday they accumulated uh, $300 million. I will talk about that um, later on this video. So maybe Bitcoin spot ETF can offset some potential selling pressure from Matt Cox. And um, yeah, that's about it. So let's see. Let's see if Bitcoin will pull a little bit lower or maybe not. Maybe the $53,000 indeed was the bottom. So yesterday I ran the poll on Twitter. Let's remember Germany sold 50k Bitcoin for $3 billion. Matt Cox has almost three times more than that. 140,000 Bitcoin at 8.8 .8 billion bucks. So majority of people said that $53,000 was indeed the bottom. And the rest of the people said uh, Bitcoin may pull back even lower so let's see bitcoin fear and greed index today we are 65 pin greed <laughs> look how quickly market sentiment is able to change yesterday we were neutral at 52 and the day before that we were in fear so yes uh, market sentiment literally skyrocketed from fear all the way to greed so i guess that's good for bitcoin because bitcoin was $65,000. Let's see where Bitcoin will end up by the end of the day today. Let's move on. So Michael Saylor gives indeed very smart advice to outperform NVIDIA. Get on the Bitcoin standard. Indeed, since a MicroStrategy adopted Bitcoin back in August 10, 2020, MicroStrategy is up by 1,200% relatively higher compared to Nvidia that is up by 1050% and Bitcoin's up by 433% only. So it seems like MicroStrategy outperforms Bitcoin but by almost 3x <laughs> which is humongous. And then yeah, I think it's irrelevant to talk about other stocks like Tesla, Google and whatever. Yes, definitely buy Bitcoin. So let me guys give you a quick update about Bitcoin spot ETFs, what happened yesterday. As we can see, BlackRock yesterday bought $117 million worth of Bitcoin, Fidelity $36 million, uh, Bitwise $15 million, and ARK $117 million. Exactly the same amount as BlackRock did. <laughs> what a funny coincidence. And then Grayscale sold nothing. So the net flow for the day will be $300 million, slightly lower than it was back on Friday, $310 million, but two consecutive days with $300 million and over. So yes, we do have like, uh, I don't know, seven days, eight days positive streak for Bitcoin spot ETF inflows, which is definitely fantastic. So the total for BlackRock will be $18.3 billion uh, bidwise, Sorry, Fidelity 9.7 billion, Bitwise 2.1 billion, ARC 2.6 billion, Grayscale sold 18.6 billion dollars, so the net flow will be 16.1 billion dollars. And I think it could actually be a new all time high, if I'm not mistaken. Another thing that I forgot to mention that the average inflow for Bitcoin spot ETF since Bitcoin spot ETF were launched would be 200 million dollars. So the past three days we had definitely higher number 310 and 300 million bucks let's see what the number will look like today let's move on breaking news Matt Gox transfers bitcoin to newly wallet signal of repayment let's take a look on-chain data shows that Matt Gox wallet transferred around 95,000 bitcoin across two transactions to newly created addresses the first shift of 47,000 bitcoin was valued at nearly 3 billion dollars the destination wallets remain unidentified but presumed to be linked to the Madgax ongoing repayment process. The exchange owes creditors $9 billion in total, uh, stemming from the Bitcoin lost in the Madgax in famous 2014 hack. So indeed, they transfer almost $6 billion worth of Bitcoin, 95,000 BTC. And uh, soon after that transfer, we got some news from Kraken. This is what Kraken stated. We have successfully received creditors funds, Bitcoin BCH from Madgax trustee. While we will work to distribute funds as quickly as possible, please anticipate seven to 14 days for funds to be credited to your account. The amount you will receive has been determined by the trustee and we will distribute according to their instructions. 
well, we do not know how much Bitcoin Kraken received. I'm pretty sure they did not receive entire six billion dollars. Maybe they received three billion, maybe they received less. But look, if they will distribute three billion dollars within seven to 14 days, <laughs> that that is not going to look good because if three billion dollars would go directly on the market, we could see a big red candle, hopefully. This is not going to happen but keep in mind guys there are multiple exchanges involved into this so there is a kraken a bitstamp maybe a bunch of others probably going to receive bitcoin and distribute them but let's see let's see what's gonna happen all right guys let's take a look at some interesting bitcoin charts so we have this uh, famous chart that has been on the twitter for quite some time is this is happening right now <laughs> Look, if there would be more, no Madcox, this definitely would happen. But at this point, I don't know. I'm not sure. Lastly, let's take a look at this quick video where Larry Fink has to explain why he buys Bitcoin. Let's take a look. Now, I, I know uh, you have been a leader in willing to embrace crypto. You yeah. have made it so that people can be in Bitcoin. We hear that you are thinking about Ethereum. These are incredible things. How Now, BlackRock is not known as a... Uh, <laughs> A gunslinger by any means. So you obviously must believe that this may be as an alternative. Is this an alternative uh, in order to be able, because of the a deficit, maybe something long-term people should have? Absolutely. Um, as you know, I was a skeptic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, you know, I was a proud skeptic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I studied it, learned about it, and I came away saying, okay, you know, my opinion five years ago was wrong. Here's my opinion today. This is what I believe in today. I believe the opportunity today. I believe Bitcoin is legitimate. I'm not trying to say there's not misuses like everything else, but it is a legitimate financial instrument that allows you to have maybe uncorrelated, non-correlated type of returns. I believe it is an instrument that you invest in when you're more frightened, though. It is an instrument when you believe that co countries are debasing their currency, de debasing their currency by excess deficits, and some countries are. I believe we have um, countries where you're frightened of your everyday existence and have an opportunity to invest in, in a, a something that is outside your country's uh, you know, control, then you can have more financial control. And so I'm a, a major believer that there is a role for Bitcoin in, in portfolios. I believe you're going to see that as, an, as a, one of the asset classes that we all look at. I look at it as digital gold, as I said before, and I do believe there's a, a, there's a, there's a real need for everyone to look at it as, as one alternative to, I would say, the optimism that I have in the world. If you want to hedge hope, Bitcoin is not a, an instrument for hope unless you're hopeful you're going to make a lot of money on it. <laughs> but it, I, I look at it as a vehicle in which you're expressing your, your financial acumen in something that you're more frightened of the world, you're more frightened of your existence. And I believe there's a great industrial use for it. And I, and I think a lot of people are missing that. So Larry Fink is indeed a very smart guy and he turned from Bitcoin skeptic into a Bitcoin a bull. Obviously, he has a incentive for that he has bitcoin spot etfs they make um, money by holding bitcoin they're charging asset under management fees but look i was quite surprised hearing this from larry fank from one of the biggest bankers in the world he said that if you want to be outside of the system if you want to not directly uh, be involved into legacy financial system then you have to buy bitcoin additionally he said that inflation us dollars being debased all the time so obviously bitcoin is beneficial <laughs> i was quite surprised hearing this from larry fink but thumbs up to larry fink all right guys let me know what's gonna happen with bitcoin with matt cox comment below subscribe and like this video